can you imagine living in a world without making any decisions? Every day of our lives we make decisions, big and small. Since the programs are meant to model and solve real world problems, we need an effective way to be able to express ways through which the program can also make decisions based on certain factors. All programming languages thus have some or the other programming constructs by which conditions can be expressed. Java is no exception to this rule. Let us dive in and explore the conditional code statements in Java. The if statement. The if statement, also called the if then statement, is the simplest of all the conditional statements. It works by checking a condition and if that condition is true, then the piece of code in the curly braces after the if statement is executed else it is skipped and the control goes to the next statement after the if block. The if block consists of all the code in the curly braces. This statement mimics the real world behavior where we do some action based on some condition being true. For example, we will go to the movie if we get the tickets, else we do not. Here is an example of the if statement in action. We have a class test in which we declare a variable x and assign it a value of 5. Then we check through the if statement if the value of x is less than 10 then we print the line. This is an example of if statement. Please note that if the if condition evaluates to a false then the body of the if statement in this case shown by the opening and closing curly braces is not executed and the control moves to the next statement which in this example would mean that the program exits as there is no statement after if. The if then else statement. The if then else statement is a slight enhancement over the if statement. Here we define a program flow in such a way that the program executes one block of code if the condition is true and another block of code if the condition is false. We can see in the flowchart here that when the test condition evaluates to true, the code in the true part executes and when it evaluates to false, the code in the false part is executed. For example, this statement would mimic the real world flow where let's say if we get the movie tickets, we go to the movie, else we go out and eat in a restaurant. The execution of the code in these two blocks one for the true statement and one for the false statement is mutually exclusive. This means that only one of them will execute. There can be no condition where both these will execute. Here is an example of the if then else statement. We have extended our previous example of the if statement and added an else condition to demonstrate the if then else statement. In the example here, if the value of x is less than 20, then the program prints if statement executed. Else it will print else statement executed. Try changing the value of x and then executing the program and observe the results. Note carefully that for no value of x will both the if and the else part of the statement be executed. This is what we mean by the if and the else part are mutually exclusive. Here is an example that you would be familiar with and which could use the if then else programming statement to validate your login into the Facebook application. For example, if the username and password entered is correct, then you would be logged into Facebook else you would be shown an invalid username and password message. The if then else if statement. The if then else if statement can be used to chain together a series of if then statements. If we want to check for multiple conditions and have different sets of code execute when different of these conditions are true, then we can use this if then else if statements. Just like the if else, all the statements in this if then else if statement are mutually exclusive. That is, 
for any particular condition only one of them will execute. Also note that if none of the conditions in the check evaluates to a true then the last else statement will execute. Later we will see a better way to write such conditional checks with the switch statements. Let's see an example. Here we define a class test in which we define the variable x and assign it a value of 20. Then we use the if then else if statement to check this value of x and depending on the value of x we print different messages as shown here. We check for values of x being 10 or 20 or any other value through the three checks that we have in the if then else if statements shown here. We could add as many number of else if statements to this statement and check for different values of x. The last else statement is executed if none of the conditions before it becomes true. The switch statement. Ok, now let's look at a better way to check for multiple conditions. In a program where there may be many different conditions to check, then writing them one by one as different if then else if statements in an if then else if statement block can make the code messy and error prone. Switch statements simplify a block of multiple if then else if statements. Use the switch statement to select one of the many blocks of code to be executed. A switch block checks the value of a variable and based on that lets a specific piece of code be run. Let's see an example to make it clear. The switch statement works in an interesting way. First we have a single expression, most often a variable that is evaluated once. The value of the expression is then compared with the value for each case in the structure. If there is a match, the block of code associated with that particular case is executed. It is extremely important to use the break to prevent the code from running into the next case automatically and executing its body as well. Missing this break is a big mistake that many beginner programmers do. What if the value of the expression does not match any of the values in the case structure? In that case, if a default case is provided as shown here, then the code in the default case body is executed, else none of the code from the switch statement is executed and the program exits the switch statement. This is a pictorial representation of the way a code control may flow in the switch block. The value of the switch variable is checked at the beginning and depending on which case it matches with, the corresponding case's code block is executed. Then after that the program exits the switch block. If there is no match then optionally we can add a code block the default case which would then be executed as the default one. The above code samples provide two examples of the same functionality. The left side uses the switch statement while the right side uses a combination of the if else if statements. The default block on the left corresponds to the last else block on the right. The above code samples provide two examples of the same functionality. Each check of the case statement on the left corresponds to the if condition on the right. Which do you think is a neater and a better way to do the same thing?